Welcome. In this video, we will learn to work a little bit with spherical harmonics by solving Griffith's problem 4.3, as it appears in the third edition of his book, Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now, what we want to do is construct the spherical harmonic for L equals zero and M equals zero, and also for L equal two and M equals one. And we want to then check that these states are both normalized and also orthogonal. So that's what we will do. Now, of course, um, there's a lot of formulas here, so I just wrote them down here. But the formula for the spherical harmonic is this monster that we see right there. And this right here is the associated Legendre polynomial, which we can find by using this other formula down here. And finally, this PL that is inside that formula is just a Legendre polynomial of Lth order, which can be found with this formula. Okay, so basically, if we want to find the spherical harmonic, we need to find PL, plug it in here to find PLM, and plug it in there to finally find the actual spherical harmonic. So that's what we want to do. All right, so um, let's just start. So the f the this first spherical harmonic y zero zero right l equal m equal zero is relatively simple. So what is p l of zero right? So what is p when l is zero? What is p zero? What what is the um, the Legendre polynomial for l equal zero? So let's see. This is one over two to the lth, which is one times zero factorial, which is also one. So all of this is one. So goodbye times the zeroth derivative, which is no derivative, <laughs> you will take zero derivatives. And then we have x squared minus one to the L, which is zero, so also one. So it turns out that this polynomial is one. Okay, with this in mind, let's now go for P zero zero, right? The associated Legendre polynomial. Well, this is one minus X squared to the M over two power, but M is zero, so that thing is one. We have to take zero derivatives, so <laughs> this is also just one. Okay, so pretty simple stuff. Now we go for y zero zero. Okay, so with this we go y zero zero. Now this epsilon in front we defined to be minus one to the mth power if m is greater or equal to zero. So it is zero, so it is minus one to the zeroth power, which is one. So no need to write it down. Then you have square root of 2L plus 1, so 1 over 4 pi. And then we have 0 minus 0 factorial, uh, 0 minus 0, so 0 factorial, which is 1, divided by 0 factorial, which is 1. So <laughs> this is simply Y0, 0. Okay, so Y0, 0 is simply 1 over the, uh, the square root of 1 over 4 pi. Okay, so that is the, the first spherical harmonic. You will probably encounter this quite often, especially in exams, because it's very often that in exams you don't really have the time to do much more. So sometimes they say, okay, just find, I don't know, the, the wave function of the hydrogen atom um, for like n equal four or something and L equal m equal zero, right? Because you just don't have enough time. Um, okay, but let's continue. So now I want to see if this is normalized. So. Let's see, one is equal to. So let's see, we are going to integrate over all of space. Now all of space, we are in spherical coordinates. So we're going to integrate from zero to two pi, zero to pi, and it's only, well, theta and, and phi, so no r here. And now we want to integrate y zero, zero times y zero, zero, a complex conjugate, but well, it's real, so it's simply this thing squared. And now, of course, sine theta d theta d phi. Okay, so um, here, of course, keep in mind it is phi is that the one that goes from 0 to 2 pi, so let's just plug this thing in. So this is 1 over 4 pi, so 1 over 4 pi. Now, the phi integral goes from 0 to 2 pi, so we get a 2 pi from the integral, nothing depends on phi, so that's pretty easy. And we have to divide by 4 pi, right, this one. And then we integrate from 0 to pi, sine of theta d theta. Now this integral is, well, pretty easy. First of all, we have 1 half, which comes from this. And then, well, integral of sine is minus cosine, so we get minus cosine of theta between 0 and pi. So evaluate this. 
and we get minus one half. I just took the minus outside and we get cosine of pi, which is minus one, minus cosine of zero, which is one. So we get uh, minus two times minus one half, so one. So there we go. It is indeed normalized, right? It is equal to one, which is what we what, what, what we expected, what we hoped for. I, I promise you when we found this expression that the result will be not normalized. So well, <laughs> now you see that it is indeed true. Okay, so that is the first one. So let's now go for y to one. Okay, so maybe let's go to the side a little bit. So now the second spherical harmonic that we wish to find, so L equal two and M equal one. Okay, so that's what we want to find now. So as before, we begin by finding the Legendre polynomial for L equals two, which is, let's see, so one over, we're just using this formula right here. So this one, one over two to the L, so two to the two, two factorial, which is, well, it's just two. Then we have to take the second derivative of x squared minus one squared. Okay, uh, now here there's a few ways to do this. Um, you could just first calculate this and then take the derivative or take the derivative and apply the chain rule. I like to first uh, calculate this because that way it's easier for me to apply the the derivative twice like on one go. So this is x to the fourth minus two x squared uh, minus one. So that's what we get. That's what we now want to take the derivative of. Let's move it up. So now we want to derive that. So first of all, here we have two cubed, which is eight. So one over eight. And now we take two derivatives of this. Well, that's easy, right? Here we get four x cubed and then three times x squared. So we get four times three x squared. Here we get minus four and nothing else, right? When we take two derivatives and the, the one, well, it goes to zero. So this thing here, we can just simplify this. We get one half three x squared minus one. Right? I just simplified uh, the, the fours with the eight. Okay, so that is the Legendre polynomial. What about the associated Legendre polynomial, right? That comes from this. Well, what we need to do is take the mth derivative now, okay? so the mth, the absolute value, but in this case, it's two, not minus two, so it doesn't matter. Uh, sorry, one, not two. So m is equal to one, right? So m is equal to one, that's the point. So we have to take one derivative of this. All right, so the derivative of this polynomial will be, let's see, this doesn't depend on x, so that's going to go to zero. We have x squared, which gives us a factor of two, which cancels out with this one half, so we end up with three, x. Okay, that, that's it. So the associated Legendre polynomial for L equal to M equal one will be one minus X squared to the one half times three X. Okay, so that's that result. And now all that we need to do is plug everything into our formula for the spherical harmonic. Now I'm uh, not allowing you to see all of it there. So let's just plug it in. So this is y to one, right, of theta comma phi. So here we have epsilon, which is epsilon, let's look at, look at this. So it's minus one to the mth power for m greater or equal to zero. So that means since m is equal to one, we get a minus sign. So we get minus. Okay. Now we have square root of two L plus one, so five divided by four pi times L minus M, so that's going to be two minus one, so one factorial, which is one, divided by two plus one factorial, so that's three factorial, which is three times two. Okay, and then we have E to the I phi, and then the, uh, the Legendre, the associated Legendre polynomial, which is one minus X squared, but it says we have to evaluated at cosine. So instead of x squared, we write cosines. So cosine squared theta uh, to the one half and then three cosine theta. Okay. So now with this, 
we can do a few things. So y to one, this is equal to. Uh, let's see. So first of all, we can take this three and just put it into the square root. So we have minus five times nine divided by eight pi times three. So here, of course, nine divided by three, that's simply three. So we get minus 15 divided by eight. So minus 15 divided by eight pi. And then we have e to the i phi and one minus cosine squared, that is sine squared. So this is sine squared. And since we're taking the square root, we get simply sine theta cosine theta. Okay, so that's the, uh, the spherical harmonic that we were looking for. Now let's make sure that it is indeed uh, properly normalized. And I just realized that I put the minus sign inside, which is a huge crime. I'm sorry about that. Oh, that that's of course outside. I don't, I don't know how it got inside. Okay, sorry about that. So now let's normalize this. So we go uh, the integral from zero to two pi, integral from zero to pi of and now we have this thing squared so we get 15 over 8 pi times the exponentials will cancel out one will be positive one will be negative so you end up with one then we have sine squared of theta cosine squared of theta and then we have sine theta d theta so we have one more sine so this would be sine cubed so sine cubed theta. Okay, um, so now uh, the next thing would be, well, the, the phi integral as before is very easy. Oh, so this is actually d phi, sorry, d phi d theta. So this integral is very, very easy. So all we need to do here is, well, that's straight up two pi. <laughs> There's nothing to do there. Now the other integral, let's take 15 over, over eight pi outside. And now notice we have sine cubed cosine squared. So it isn't all that easy, but the trick here usually is to get something of the form cosine to some power times sine or sine to some power times cosine, because that way we can say, okay, u is either sine or cosine and we get u squared or cubed or whatever. And then we get the u simply the other one being very simple. So that's the logic. So here let's use, for example, the fact that a cosine squared of u or, or of theta, sorry, is equal to one minus sine squared of theta. So by doing this, uh, we could, let's see, actually no, because if we do that, yeah, we should choose the other one because if we do that, then we only have sines and that is not really the best thing, right? So let's do that sine squared of theta is equal to one minus cosine squared of theta. So this would give us one sine, which remains. So we get sine of theta, and then we have one minus cosine squared of theta times cosine squared of, of theta, d theta. Okay, and now we can say, okay, let u be cosine of theta, so that du is minus sine of theta d theta. And with this, well, let's simplify here, we get 15 over four, with this, look at what we get. So we have the, well, we now have to change uh, the limits of integration. So if uh, at zero, cosine is one, and at uh, pi, cosine is minus one. So those are our limits. So we go from one to minus one. And now sine theta d theta, right, that's going to be minus du. So we get a minus sign in front and a du down uh, back there. Then we have one minus cosine squared, so we get u squared, and cosine squared, which is another u squared. Okay, so let's use the minus sign to reverse the limits of the integral. So 15 over four, integral from minus one to one, and then we get u squared minus u to the fourth du. And this integral is very easy, right? It's simply a polynomial. Uh, so from this, we get, actually let's integrate right away. So we get u cubed over three minus u to the fifth over five, and we evaluate between minus one and one. Okay, so we have 15 over four, and then we get 
u cubed over 3, that gives us 1 third, minus, minus 1 to the cubed, which is still minus 1 third, so we get plus 1 third. Then we have minus 1 fifth, minus, minus, minus 1 fifth, so still just minus 1 fifth. So here we just add these together, so we get 2 thirds and minus 2 fifths. So 2 thirds and minus 2 fifths. So let's take common denominator here, which is at 15. So we get a 5 times 2, so 10 over 15 minus, we have to multiply by 3, so 6 over 15. So we get 15 over 4 times 4 over 15, which is 1. So as we can see, this is normalized as well. So the last thing that we need to check is that indeed these two are actually orthogonal. Okay, so we want to see that this harm, uh, uh, spherical harmonic is orthogonal to the other one that we found. So the, the one that we found before is 1 over 4 pi. So let's integrate. So to see that they are orthogonal, let's integrate from 0 to 2 pi, from 0 to pi, y 0 0, y 2 1, conjugate. So that, that's what we want to do. I, either of them could be conjugate, it doesn't matter, they are orthogonal either way. So let's just write them in. So 1 over 4 pi inside of a square root times minus 15 over 8 pi e to the i phi or minus i phi depending on if you're using the conjugate one or not, which doesn't make a difference cosine theta times another sign, because we're integrating in spherical coordinates, d theta d phi. So as before, um, these constants, well, they are constants, they're not going to be zero. This exponent is not going to be zero, right? It's e to the minus i phi, it's just going to give you some number. I'm interested in this theta part, because look at it, sine squared theta cosine theta over zero to pi. Right, so you may already know what this integral is. Right, so let's take a look at the theta part. So this is sine squared theta, cosine theta d theta. So to integrate this as before, right, we have the derivative of sine and sine. So we just say, okay, u is equal to sine theta, du is equal to cosine theta d theta. So by doing that, we get integral from now in this case we get u which goes all the way from z if theta is zero it is zero and if uh, theta is pi is pi it's also zero and then we have sine which is now uh, u squared du so this is u cubed i mean you should already know that it's zero but just to show you u cubed over three evaluated between zero and zero so yeah <laughs> i mean of course it's zero so that means that this integral is indeed zero and our um, spherical harmonics are indeed orthogonal, which is, you know, honestly what we expected. So there we go. I um, hope this uh, helped you gain a bit more understanding of how these spherical harmonics work so that you may use them more confidently in the future. So I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching.